just excuse me for a minute. Call me a helmet. So I've just um, adjusted his attitude. <laughs> the tiny Isle of Man in the middle of the Irish Sea is only 33 miles long with a population of just 85,000. Best known for fast motorbikes, cats with no tails, and generous tax breaks, this self-governing island protects its privileged status with some of the harshest sentences in the British Isles. Police had a report that I had a knife. It was my vapor stick. And is home to one of the world's most unusual prisons. This place is a mental institution. Oh, yeah! Slash youth club. It holds up to 150 prisoners and has some of the lowest reoffending rates in Europe. With one officer to every inmate, in this small island jail, everybody knows your name. There's like two degrees, three degrees of separation here. You me. Generations of the same family are banged up together. It's like a soap opera. With male wings and a female wing under the same roof. They've been told off a few times for heavy petting. Doing time here is unlike doing time anywhere else in Britain. Jerby Prison is known for its close relations between officers and inmates. You know, when they go on X Factor, they be like, this is him playing to the cons, you know. <laughs> they loved it, made them better people, you know, when they oh, <laughs> never turn to crime ever again. Entertaining the prisoners is wing officer Jonesy, who's been clocking on for 22 years. Passes the time, keeps the spirits up. Most evenings, inmates are allowed out of their cells for two hours. Because there's that few prisoners in here, the screws and the lads, they, they seem to get on more, do you know what I mean? If you talk to a screw longer than 10 minutes in another prison, mate, people will start calling you a grass and that, but it's just so relaxed here. But not every member of staff is keen to get close. We get prisoners here all, all right, mate, and hugs and claps and how you doing. That isn't what prison should be like. They're not your mate. There's a line, and they shouldn't cross that line as far as I'm concerned. Play nice, I should go bed. I'm always polite, I'm always hard working, but I'm always around trying to make the days go quicker, you know. First time offender Mark Whip also known as Whippy, has served just over half of a four-and-a-half-year sentence. I'm, the, like, the wing clown, you know. Ever since I was in school, the teachers called me a lovable rogue. I've always been, like, you know, quite naughty, if you know what I mean? He's entertaining. If they were all miserable all the time, it'd be a horrible place for us and a horrible place for them. So you need idiots like him. Whippy might be a first-time offender, but it's not his first time inside. My dad was a prison officer up here, like, so we come up here, he had his keys on him and that, and he was walking around and in the cells and all that, and I actually remember lying down on one of the, the benches going, I'll be see you soon, Dad, and here I am now, idiot. We didn't get on for a while. It's actually brought us closer together. I speak to him every day on the phone. Whip is applying for early release, but to qualify, he has to take advantage of the job training schemes. He's earning £14 a week in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting the weeds out so the beds are ready to start planting in if we want to plant anything else. I got loads of different varieties of tomato, yeah, but... I haven't had none of them on my dinner. I think the screws must have them on there, because <laughs> we haven't had none. Whippy's best mate inside is Ian. 
Eight months ago, he was caught bringing drugs into the Isle of Man. I have been known to, like, look after a few pop ones and that, but not on, not on, like, like all of it. She had me with these in there, like that, saying I need to go to healthcare. <laughs> I've known him a very long time since uh, being at school, and then he wandered in, here. Just tear up to it and put the laces clean through it. <laughs> Whiffy is pretty much exactly the same, I would say. He's still a kid at heart, basically. So I was just going to show you what I got sacked for last time. He's only recently been allowed back on gardening duty after an incident. Have a smell of that. I drank that. <laughs> Loads of horse shit with water in it. <laughs> Tastes lovely. <laughs> bet me 50 quid that I wouldn't do it, and I never shy away from a bet, you know what I mean? You never even got paid, did you, really? No. So, like, it's only for nothing. Someone still owes me 50 quid. <laughs> the prison takes a tough stance on poor behaviour. Whippy was not only suspended from his job, he also lost his chance of early release. Only well-behaved inmates are eligible for parole. Six months for drinking dirty water is a bit harsh, I think. I was gutted, like, cos if I'd behaved myself in here, then I, I would be out. I have no sympathy for anyone who acts like an idiot. So we expect them to work, go to education, to engage. We expect offenders to earn parole. Are we done, mate? Jerby is one of the few prisons in Britain where men and women are banged up together. The female wing is currently home to just five inmates. When we started the month, I had 727 sleeps left. Mum of two, Natalie, is 12 months into a six-year sentence for drug possession. The girls, they know I'm in prison, but obviously they're too young to understand. Coming in here, like, I've lost my house. I've lost everything I own, so now I've got to start again. She's working hard to earn her parole, taking numerous jobs inside. I'm probably the busiest inmate in the prison. I've got five jobs. I work hard, I take the opportunities given to me, whereas some people just sit there and do nothing for their sentence and then expect to get their parole. But you have to want it for yourself. Natalie isn't just doing porridge, it's her job to make it for the whole of Jerby Prison. The other week I burnt it. It didn't go down very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one to sit and twiddle my thumbs. I think that drives me insane. So hopefully the next two years go quick. As a reward for her good behaviour and to prepare her for release, Natalie is being considered for a day job on the outside. It gets me more time out of the prison. It helps me a lot with my future, cos then I can save more money to set myself up when I get out. Whippy's right-hand man, Ian, hails from Liverpool. He's doing time for Class A drugs. Cos there's so few lads, you make loads of mates in here, do you know what I mean? But... So you've only got three. Yeah, but there's only... Yeah, but I, I could make more if I wanted to. I'll just stick to these, only. We've all got each other's back, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, you know I mean? And if you're just on your own, then you're going to make your time harder, aren't you, so... 4-1. Four, 4-2. Four, 4-2, four, 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 two, me. Unlike Whippy, Ian's been using his time inside to catch up on a little light reading. That's my favourite book. A Brief History of Time. I'm saying it's my favourite. It looks like I haven't read it there, but it's the second time I've read it. I don't like baffling people with words, but I can't pronounce them because of my Scouse accent most of the time, do you know what I mean? So we were right to correct people. All inmates are offered education classes. Ian is in a creative writing class run by Gemma. Everybody's been working on their own bits of writing, I know that. So I was wondering if anybody wants to share any stories or poems they may have written. Yeah. I crack in my cell door and the obligatory good morning off the screw to make sure I'm still breathing. Prisoners think I'm rushing for breakfast, but no, I'm looking for, the, for beauty over the mountains of Jerby. Venus, the morning star, brightens my day before anything on the prison horizon can darken it. Well done. Being a model pupil is a far cry from Ian's misspent youth. 
I live in an area right next to the football ground, so at the age of 11, 12, I was already racketeering by minds of people's cars. And when you say to someone in Liverpool, can I mind your car when you're a kid? They've got to give you the money because they're worried that you're going to smash the car up then, do you know what I mean? So I'd be making hundreds of pounds when I was like 10, 11. If 40,000 people are going to descend on your area, mate, it's got to be a pound to me, mate, hasn't it? Some of the inmates' writing is being entered into a nationwide prison competition. When he sits down and knuckles down, it's, it's amazing what he can churn out. He's so articulate and he's very intelligent, and it just it, it really shows it comes across in his writing style. Sometimes you're stuck in a cycle of offending or stuck in the same sort of cycle of life, and just, just being apart from that for a while gives you the opportunity to start thinking about different options when you leave here. <laughs> As the inmates finish classes, the staff are also clocking off. Senior Officer Bob will be retiring in a few weeks, but tonight his commute home is very short. I'm getting ready to make me tea. I'm gonna have a little bit of a little bit of a burger, and maybe a chunk of steak for me tea. He's camping out in the prison car park. I started doing it a few years ago when the TT was on and the Manx Grand Prix, because six o'clock at night now, the roads are shut for the TT practices and the Grand Prix practices. And whereas a normal 40 minute journey home could take me anywhere up to three hours. Every year, over 40,000 visitors descend on the island to watch the fastest and longest motorbike race in the world. So, I stay here and have me barbecue. It is a little slice of heaven. If you look over on the fence over there, you'll see a cable going through the trees, just above the trees. It's my satellite dish. Sit down, have me burger in the sun, and that is the end of my day. My day is done. Enjoying the vista, having a burger. Why would you want to drive home? Can I have Mark Whip, please? Yes. After spending two and a half years inside, Whippy's second application for early release has been considered by the parole board. In the UK, parole is automatic. Most inmates are eligible after serving half of their sentence. Can you give me just ten minutes while I talk to Mark? I'll be back soon. Not so on this island, where parole has to be earned. You've had a number of jobs and progressed to being allowed to work in horticulture. Despite these positive signs, you have shown a worrying pattern of irresponsible behaviour. So they were looking for signs that you would be able to sustain good behaviour after returning to the community. Obviously, they didn't feel that that was a it's particular just all bullshit, positive. Really, isn't it? Let's be fair, it's bullshit. I've got I'm a low security, a low risk of reoffending again. I've got a job to go to. I've got a family home to go to. They've kept me in here for an extra eight months. You need to keep your nose clean. Yeah. All right. Sounds... I'm sorry. There you go. Cheers. Thanks a lot. All right, Matt. What we're looking for is change, and what we're looking for is the evidence that we have reduced risk and obviously the parole committee don't feel that they've got that at this time. Our vision is very much about protecting the public, but also about reducing reoffending. I work in a business that wants less customers. Well, you need to clean your act up, lad. You know, all joking aside, you know, you just do this crazy shit like you don't want to get out. Just doing it for a laugh, will I? It's just, I don't think he wants parole. I think he gets close to parole, and he gets so scared he's going to get it, he does something daft, so he don't have to worry about it. Whippy, who has five months left of his sentence, should now be on his best behaviour. But just two days after failing to earn parole, he's whipping up some trouble. What you... me? <laughs> I always get to play. You've got to have a little laugh and a joke, though, don't you? Do you know what I mean? With every incident, Whippy's chances of early parole look less likely. At what point did you get it, with? Yeah, I only held the door open. It's not that. He's still involved. What can I say about you? Being immature, being involved. Cheered me up, actually. I was well down before, and now I'm cheered up. Isle of 
third man, the TT, is in full swing. And on the women's wing, Natalie's getting ready for work. But today she's not doing a shift in the prison kitchen. She's impressed the governor enough to work on day release. It's a big achievement to be able to go out and work in the community and be able to have the trust of the prison to do that. You can't just drop someone out at the end of a long sentence. You've actually got to test them. You've got to give them trust. This is about leading to employment, but it also gives them self-confidence and improved self-esteem. Then they're less likely to re-offend. In TT Week, the island is jam-packed, and Natalie is having a trial at a local cafe. I'm quite nervous. I think it's just I just need to settle in, don't I? Getting used to everything and the menu. People have different ways of doing things. Before I went to prison, um, I was working in a pub in Ramsey as the chef there. It's a really, really good idea. I think it helps the prisoners as well. They know they've done wrong, you know, and to get back in the community, I think, is, is fantastic. Table nine, and the scrambled egg on toast. Yeah, I've really missed working in the kitchen. I miss going to work every day. I like working. I think you did really well. You did fantastic, actually, so thank you very much for hard, all your hard work. And if I can get you in any more as yeah, well. Yeah, that's great. Is that all right with you? Yeah. She likes me. <laughs> so, yeah, it's really nice to be out and working, embracing the opportunity. <laughs> After losing parole twice, Whippy has now had a change of heart. She how I do all the work. He's doing extra jobs around the prison in the hope it will help him gain parole on his third attempt. I just want to get out, go to work, start life over again, prove to my mum and dad that I'm not just some druggie that's got the house raid and come to jail and all that. I think they should give me that chance to prove them wrong. He got knocked back into parole and he was really disappointed. He just needs to remember that. There are certain things in your character that you've, you've got to build on while you're in here and show that you've, you've changed and you've matured. In the classroom, there's some news for Ian from the National Writing Competition. Ian, you got, in the life story category, you got a commended award. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Are you impressed? With yourself, you mean? Yeah, with yourself. Yeah. When you're younger, you mess about, don't you? And you don't want to do things like that in front of your mates because you get laughed at, don't you? If, if you're um, intelligent and clever. But it makes me feel proud, like, that I can do it. I never want no money, though, if, if something got published, do you know what I mean? Bit of moolah. Over on B Wing, Bob won't be camping in the car park much longer. <sighs> Quilly's leaving today. It's his last day before he retires. I have been here 20 and a half years. Now I've had some good times. Mrs. Kane has taught me everything I know. Taught me how to be nasty. <laughs> <laughs> how to shout at people. <laughs> how to lock them all up. She was my mentor when I first joined. Characters like him, you know. They'll always be missed, won't you? Mm. Mm. Before he clocks off, Bob has a few farewells to make. Yeah, finish. Well, yeah, I will miss some of the mates, some of the fun times with them, some of the laughs with them, but equally, I've had to fight a lot of them as well. <laughs> See you, Ross. Take it easy. I think a lot of the inmates are going to miss him because he's locked some of these lads up since they were 15, 16 years old. Hope you'd have seen her, William. Take care, Carl, all right? Don't come back again. Whippy's hoping he'll be joining Bob on the outside. Hopefully this is my last lunch. What a way yeah. to go outside. A ball to start to After serving two years and ten months for drug offences, today Whippy is facing his third parole hearing. If he'd behaved, he could have got out seven months ago.
got it. I've got it. Hi, right, Mum. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Stop it then. You're going to make me cry. Let me see. Hopefully tomorrow, I don't know, maybe, maybe Friday, maybe Monday. Definitely won't be coming back here because I won't do this to my family again, you know. Put them through what I've put them through, having to come up here every week and see me and, like, m m money they've got to give me to, s to support myself in here, so I wouldn't put them through it again. Hopefully I won't come back here. Definitely won't. Next time, how was it? Craig's got a point. So I'm in for a knife crime, right? George Stahl says his work cut out. Women's stretch denim, ripped butt, lifting jeans. I can do that with a standard hat. And Margot's had enough. Well, I can't live with any more of this nonsense. In you, Ross Kemp, living with our documentary maker, explores the country's knife crime epidemic. That's tomorrow at 7.30. Then get inside the extraordinary world of criminal excess tomorrow at 9 as police camera auction is behind the scenes at the auction house selling off crooks' hidden riches. Next, we're back in Corrie.